Today I have a couple of cool Fusion 360 tips for you that you actually left in the comments on previous videos because you're all very smart and it pays to listen to you. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. I have been completely swamped this week with stuff. We all have stuff and this week my stuff kept me out of the shop. But I thought I'd take a few minutes and pass on some Fusion 360 tips that some of you left in the comments on previous videos and that quite frankly have streamlined my workflow. I don't know why I never noticed these features earlier, but I didn't until you pointed them out. The first tip that I learned from all of you recently is about the center line when creating a sketch. So let me start a new sketch here and the center line tool is right over here in the sketch palette. Here's the construction line that I use all the time, and here is the center line. I'd never noticed this before, but I certainly know it's here now. So in a previous video, I was making dust caps for air fittings, and the way I would typically do that is hit L for line, and then I would just draw an ordinary line to use as the center line for my part. And then I would use the line tool to sketch out the profile that I want to revolve to create a round part. So I'll just sketch something here. This is similar to what I was creating in that video. And then I'll put some dimensions on it. Hit D for dimension. And if I want the outside of this to be 30 millimeters, then I would click here and say 30 divided by two, because I'm actually placing a radius dimension instead of a diameter dimension. Hit enter. And now that places a 15 millimeter dimension there. Now if I double click on it, it is still 30 divided by 2, but I had to know to divide that by 2 and I had to think about dividing that by 2. Then when I get the rest of the sketch finished, and I'll just pretend I've done that, I can select this region and click revolve. Now I've selected the profile that I want to revolve, but now I have to come back and select the axis that I want to revolve it around. Click that, click OK, and now that's created a body. Now it turns out this is actually much easier if you use the center line. So I'm gonna create a new design, create a new sketch, and this time I'll hit L for line, but I'll select center line when I draw that center line. So there, now I have a center line and I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll turn that off and I'll just go ahead and sketch the rest of my profile here. And now I have my profile, but now when I hit D for dimension, if I take that dimension off of the center line and click, you can see it's now creating a diameter dimension. So if I click this and say 30, it's now created a 30 millimeter diameter dimension. Now it's really 15. If I hit D again and put another one here going the other way, well, I can't do that. How can I do that? Let me do a dimension from here to this point point. There we go. We'll create a driven dimension. So you can see the dimension is actually 15 millimeters, but because I dimensioned off of the center line, I was able to put in a diameter dimension. So I can do the same thing here. Let's say I want this to be 10, and that gives me a 10 millimeter diameter. Now the other thing that this does by using the center line is when I select this profile and click revolve, I don't have to select the center axis because it already assumes the center axis based on the fact that that is a center line. And that's it. So I can inspect the outside here. That's 30 millimeters. You can expect this. It's 10 millimeters. So I got exactly what I wanted with fewer steps. Now, is that something that is going to change your life? Yes. Yes, it is. The second tip that I actually picked up from that very same video is about dragging to create tangent lines. So if I take this cap, put a sketch on the bottom of it, I'll hit P for project, and I just want to project this surface so I have a circle. L for line, we'll make this construction, bring this out, great, C for circle, turn off the construction, we'll put a couple of circles here. Okay. Now, what I needed to do in that previous video was make a tangent line from the large circle over here to the small circle. And the way I did that was by hitting L for line, clicking somewhere on the circle here, and bringing this over and touching the second circle. And if I move back and forth, you can see there's a point 
where the tangent constraint appears and I can click. So now this line is tangent to this circle, but it's not tangent to this circle. So I can go up here, click the tangent constraint, click that line, click that circle, and now it's tangent. So I hit L again, repeat the same thing down here. And now I have these two lines tangent to both of those circles. And those constraints are there so that as I move things around, the lines will move and stay connected the way I intended. Now the problem is though that that took an extra step. So when I brought this line down here, I could get the tangent on the second end to be created automatically by snapping to the right location, but I had to come back and manually create it on the start. If I delete these though, there is a better way and somebody told me about this in the comments and I had no idea that this was the case. If I hit L for line, and then click and drag from the start circle. So instead of just clicking and then letting go and then bringing out the line, if instead I click and drag, you can see it's automatically created a tangent there. Then I can come down here, find the tangent point, let it snap to that, let go, and I have a tangent line. Do the same thing down here, click and drag, find the tangent, and now I have my tangent constraints on both ends. I had no idea that that was there, and that has saved me so much time since you all pointed that out to me, and several of you pointed that out in the comments. That is just brilliant. Uh, incidentally, you can do the same thing with lines. So if I have the line tool selected, and I create a line, and then I drag off of that point, it will create a tangent curve or a tangent arc from that second point, which is just wonderful. Had no idea that that was a thing, but it is. I might get a little too excited about little things like this, but I really don't think you can overstate the impact that lots of little efficiency improvements can have over time. If you've been around the channel for very long, you already know this about me, but for me, every task is an intellectual task, meaning that I think everything through in advance and I feel the need to understand how I'm gonna solve every problem I can foresee before I start. So little frustrations and little points of friction caused by tools or processes become a really big barrier for me because they derail my internal thought process and have a huge negative impact on my productivity. So little things like this that allow me to click, drag, and keep moving without interruption are huge. You comment on my videos all the time how impressed you are with how fast I move in Fusion 360, and stuff like this is why. So thank you for the tips and keep them coming. If you have a favorite tool or technique, leave it in the comments. If I did something really dumb and there's an easier way, I wanna hear about that too. And if you like what I do here and you wanna help support the channel, there's a link to Patreon down in the description. Thank you for watching.